Hey guys, Buildzoid here, and this is just going to be a bit of uh, proof for a statement I made in the RAM overclocking and buying basics video. Um, at the very uh, towards the end of the video, I talk about how bandwidth is not like a like frequency. Like, what is it? Well, bandwidth is not dictated by frequency. Okay, like you can be you can get more bad like if your timings suck badly enough you can lose to frequent like to memory kits that are clocked a lot lower than yours is so here's some proof of that i tested 4000 megahertz 3200 megahertz and 3600 megahertz um the restrictions were that 4000 megahertz was actually auto timings from the mo motherboard i did not touch the memory timings at 4000 megahertz at all um except for TRFC and the primaries. I set up the primaries and TRFC and every all the other sub timings were auto. Um, for 3200 megahertz, um, I went to town on it. I didn't go like super hard on it, but um, I set it up reasonably tight and I did play with most, like basically all the major timings and I think all of the secondaries I set up manually um, or at least most of the secondaries. Um, for 3600 megahertz, same is true as for 3200 megahertz. My goal was to essentially get a lower frequency memory overclock, lower frequency memory, uh, to just straight up get more bandwidth than the the 4000 megahertz uh, memory kit. I could have also done a test of like for, trying to get the bandwidth at 4000 megahertz as low as it would go by making the timings steadily worse and worse and seeing what would happen, but. Uh, uh, didn't I didn't think of that I, I didn't uh, think of doing that at the time that I was doing this testing so anyway um, I tested with uh, Ida 64's read write and copy tests for memory speed um, and that's that's the only tests I ran I didn't actually do any latency tests because latency wasn't the, the the target of my testing here um, and I tested everything in single rank, uh, single rank memory, BDI on X299, so quad channel. So let's go through the results now because uh, that's all there really is to it. So here's 4000 megahertz. Um, and so for 4000 megahertz, you can actually, like, there's an easy way to calculate your theoretical max bandwidth. Um, you basically take the width of your bus, which for a quad channel memory setup, that's 64. Now you have a 64-bit memory bus for every memory channel. So four channels, we multiply that by four. So we effectively have a 256-bit memory controller. And it runs at 4,000 megahertz. So that means, and then we divide that by eight because that's bits. And we end up with 128 gigabytes per second maximum theoretical throughput for DDR4-4000. Um, reality, if you just set up some you know th this isn't bad like you you can buy memory kits with specs like these the trfc will might be a bit lower auto usually at 4000 megahertz auto trfc ends or ends up being around 700 ish but i was on a uh old bios for the evga x299 dark when i was doing this test and that bios kind of sucks so i ended up loosening out the trfc to make the settings actually like boot consistently so, yeah, that's the timings there. Uh, the CPU was overclocked because I wanted to eliminate any other bottlenecks as much as I could. So the CPU was running 4.6 gigahertz. The mesh was at 3 gigahertz. Um, I could have probably pushed the mesh, the mesh to 3.2 gigahertz. But for, for the purposes of this test, it's just 3 gigahertz and 4.6 uh, on the CPU. So, yeah, and the end result with the board doing all of the sub timings on its own is 105.5 gigabytes per second. So that is, well, not even close to that 128 gigabytes per second theoretical maximum throughput. Now, if we go to 3200 megahertz, now here I actually played with the timings. As you can clearly see, you can't buy a 3200 memory kit spec'd for this. Um, you can actually, cl like, if you have a good BDI memory kit, hitting these kinds of settings should be possible at about 1.5 volts, but I'm not sure if it'll actually be 100% stable. Again, not the goal of my testing. Here I was literally just testing um, timings versus frequency versus bandwidth. Can I do more bandwidth at lower frequency if the timings are good enough? So, 
yeah, these are uh, th these aren't extremely amazing, but they are pretty damn good. Uh, well, for B die, these are easy. For everything else, they're well. There's very little RAM that'll actually do TRCD and TRP11, but E die and uh, AFR should actually be able to do cast latency 12 at 3200 megahertz, even possibly lower if you shove enough voltage into them, but not dailyable. Like th this is not something you could probably run every day, but for benchmarking purposes, which is really the focus of m my focus with uh, with uh, this channel, um, this is really easy to do. Like this isn't a challenge at all. Uh, so. How much bandwidth does this put down? And we're still at 4.6 gigahertz CPU clock and three gigahertz mesh. Um, well, it puts down 101.7 gigabytes per second read. And the cool thing about that is it's basically maxing out the theoretical max. So 3,200 times 256 divided by eight, 102.4 gigabytes per second is the theoretical maximum and I'm getting 101.7. Like, I am really close to doing the, the maximum throughput. So um, if I actually wanted to, so it's actually not possible for my 3200 megahertz uh, overclock to beat that 4000 megahertz settings. Um, so that's nice, at least for sure, if you buy 32, if your memory does not go above 3200 megahertz, you know for a fact that somebody at 4000 megahertz is gonna have more bandwidth than you for read operations. Because if we look at the write and copy results, uh, yeah, 4000 megahertz, that auto 4000 megahertz configuration starts looking really bad. But um, for read speed alone, it looks, right now, it looks not completely embarrassing though is not that much faster than 3200 megahertz. So that's not great. Admittedly, pretty, you know, properly configured 3200 megahertz, but nonetheless, not a complete disaster. Now let's move on to 3600. At 3600, I uh, loosened out the timings. It is actually possible on Samsung BDI to run, say, CL11 at 3600 megahertz. That's not a problem, it's doable. Uh, you just need a lot of voltage, and for the purposes of this test, I didn't really want to go. I didn't really want to go overboard with the memory timings. I wanted to run them re like I didn't want to spend uh, hours trying to get the bo like dial in the perfect settings. So I basically just threw something that I knew was re like significantly better than what the board will do on its own, but not really pushing the limits of BDI memory on uh, in terms of overclocking capabilities. So, um, we're at 3600 megahertz, 4.6 gigahertz CPU, 3 gigahertz mesh, um, and the end result is a 112.6 gigabytes per second read speed. So, now we're just straight up beating 4000 megahertz when it comes to read speed, because this is timed properly, that 4000 megahertz isn't. So, yeah. 3200 megahertz beats, uh, I mean, 3600 megahertz can beat 4000 4, megahertz on bandwidth as long as you know what you're doing with the timings and your opponent doesn't. If they did know what they were doing with their timings, then, like, because here's the thing. At 3600 megahertz, your max throughput is still going to be, uh, is going to be, like, 115 gigabytes per second. So if the, if at 4000 megahertz... Right, right, well, we can divide it by eight now and then multiply it by two, five, six anyway. Um, if at 4,000 megahertz, right, you actually put your, ti like set up your timings properly, you could hit like 125 gigabytes per second without too much difficulty. But if you let the motherboard do its thing, it's not getting anywhere near those kinds of numbers. Okay, so yeah. And if you actually, let's see what, for, it, actually I should do a max bandwidth uh, attempt that, that would be just a cool thing to try. Um, I wonder what 4200 could max out at. Let's see. Uh, no, not times eight. We need to divide by eight. Oh, no. Stupid calculator. Divide by eight, multiply by 256. 134. Hmm. Hmm. Well, it, it, well I'll see. Maybe. I'll, I, might, I might end up messing around with that because that kind of seems interesting. But nonetheless... 3600 megahertz with good timings just straight up beats 4000 megahertz with uh, stock timings. 
Um, let's keep moving on. Now we get to the read, I mean write test, as you can clearly see down here. Um, 4000 megahertz puts down an 84 gigabytes per second write speed. Um, same settings as for 4000 before. Let's move on. 3200 megahertz puts down 94 gigabytes per second. Yeah, <laughs> that is 10 gigabytes per second more write speed than 4000 megahertz. So if you're doing some kind of task which writes to the memory a lot, 3200 megahertz just completely crushes 4 gigabyte, 4000 megahertz. Um, and it gets worse. If we go to 3600 megahertz, the advantage doesn't grow that much, but it does grow. So we go all the way up to 96.6 gigabytes per second in write speed. So, yeah, that's, uh, well, that's not good for 4000 megahertz. Because 4000 megahertz, remember, was doing only 84 gigabytes per second. Not great. So let's move on to the final test. Uh, copy. For copy, 4000 megahertz does 80 gigabytes per second. Um, 3200 megahertz does a whopping 92, almost 92 gigabytes per second. It's at 91.6. Um, you know, still same CPU settings and everything. So it's not like the CPU is carrying the RAM. It's the RAM's just better. And then at 3600 megahertz, we're doing almost 100 gigabytes per second at, well, 99.1 gigabytes per second. Um, and again, you know, I've not changed the CPU speed or mesh speed. In fact, the, 32, six, the 3600 memory is running with uh, stock BCLK, which the other kits were running a small bump in BCLK. So, yeah. Um, 3600 megahertz actually has a CPU clock and mesh clock disadvantage over the other two set uh, over the other two configurations, but yeah, I, I think it's pretty clear here that you know just throwing more frequency at your RAM is like basically the the, the warning like the the lesson here is um, if you have a uh, if you have a memory kit and you are trying to get peak bandwidth because you're on like an iGPU, like you have a Ryzen 200, uh, 2000 series APU, right? You have one of these APUs. Don't just throw more frequency at it because you won't actually get more performance because GPUs are all about getting more bandwidth. And as I've just clearly proven, if you set your timings loose enough, your higher frequency will not give you the bandwidth you're expecting. Um, you're not get, going to get anywhere near the bandwidth you're expecting because your RAM is just going to sit there and spend a whole bunch of clock cycles doing a whole lot of nothing. Um, that, that's the best way to think about the timings. The more time, the, the bigger your timings are, the more time your RAM spends doing nothing, except for TREFI. TREFI is RAM refresh interval, is row refresh interval, and that one you want to set as high as possible, because the longer before, like, when the row is refreshing, you can't access any of the data in the row, um, so you want to refresh the row as little as, uh, as, how do you say this? Why am I so bad at English? Um, you want to refresh the row as, not as often, what's the opposite of often? Infrequently? As, infre as infrequently as possible. There, that's what I'm going for. But yeah, so TREFI, that's the tie, like TREFI, you want to set it as high as possible for max performance, TRFC and all the other timings, you want to get them as low as possible because uh, they're literally just wasted clock cycles. Um, and, you know, they're, they're clock cycles between you and your data and they need to be eliminated <laughs> uh, in order to get max bandwidth. So yeah, if you're... Yeah, if you're basically overclocking an APU, don't think that just throwing frequency is going to give you more bandwidth at it, out of it if you end up throwing all the timings out the window, right? You need to find a balance. And if you're doing other benchmarks, which aren't just like, not like super bandwidth focused, but they actually care a bit about latency, the balancing act gets ridiculous. Like, um, there's some benchmarks which will actually prefer trading, you know, say... 
one one or two ticks of uh, timing for 200 megahertz, and it'll actually be good for your better for your performance. And then there's other benchmarks where you'd actually want two or one or two ticks lower timings and 200 megahertz less clock speed because the better latency would actually give you the win. So yeah, memory overclocking if you're doing it for like benchmarking purposes. It really depends on your benchmark. Like a lot of the time, it depends on the benchmark you're doing, and you kind of need to figure out what what the benchmark likes best, um, and then uh, and then dial the memory into that. Now, for uh, iGPU applications, you basically should just need you should just look at getting maximum uh, bandwidth in those situations. So it should be. Basically, in those situations, one or two ticks of timing for 200 megahertz more is is a good trade. Um, whereas in like a latency application, that wouldn't necessarily be a good trade. But I actually need to get test test data for that kind of thing. But hopefully, um, you know, you know, th this is basically just to prove my point. 4,000 like frequency alone will not translate directly into more bandwidth it'll it mean it does like the more frequency you have the theoretical maximum bandwidth you can achieve is higher if you actually achieve it depends on your timings so yeah that's it for the video thank you for watching like share subscribe leave a comment down below if there's a or any question, well, yeah, comments include questions and complaints, so I don't need to mention that. Um, if you'd like to support what I do here with Actually Hardcore Overclocking, I have a PayPal, a Patreon, and there's shirts, and I'm also getting rid of uh, some other boards. Uh, there's an X99 board and a AM4 board I want to get rid of. Um, you can find a link to all of those things down in the description below, and it, the, you know, help, help out the channel through those. And yeah, so that's it for the video. Thank you for watching and uh, see you next time. Where's that stop button? There it is.